Namaste, welcome to Live Stronger. So today's video would all be about stretching. What I am going to do is I'm going to perform all the stretches possible and necessary for our workouts. And what, and what I plan to do is uh, put timestamps on the uh, stretches. So every day after finishing a workout, at least for the first week or two, uh, which in, in those videos wherein there wouldn't be uh, post-workout stretches included, you can visit this video, go to the particular timestamp, for example, if you have done a back day, you can visit the back stretches in this video and you can perform them. The stretches are usually uh, quite simple, easy to execute and mostly extend 20 seconds at a time and will be done just few number of times. So they are not extremely time consuming. Now as we progress, as we go through the program, uh, I will start doing the stretches post the workout as the intensity of the workout start increasing. Uh, and I feel it is quite important to make sure that we stretch post the workout because that would uh, release some tension and also ensure that our muscle doesn't say, uh, stay in its shortened uh, length. Instead, it goes back to its, uh, or it at least tries to go, ba uh, go back to its neutral length. What happens is when we work out for a long period of time and uh, with high intensity, our muscles tend to go into its shortened length. That is the contraction. When we try to contract a lot, for example, our biceps. Biceps contract when our uh, elbow is up. So when we do a lot of dumbbell, uh, barbell curls, dumbbell curls, the bicep is now heavily contracted and over a period of time the uh, length of the bicep it doesn't actually decrease but the bicep starts staying in its shortened form or mostly contracted form which i don't uh, want for you guys to uh, for you guys to experience so i want uh, you uh, your muscles to go back to the neutral position post neutral length post the workout so on that note, we are going to start. I'm going to start right from our toes till our neck. We don't technically need to stretch our head, but that's my uh, uh, at least objective for this video. Uh, in the progression of the workouts, uh, in the future, in the videos, as I work out, as I keep doing my transformations, I might add some new stretches, but otherwise these stretches, which I'm going to share today, would be more than sufficient and should be effective enough. And also I'll be trying to share some uh, details about if you are unable to do the stretch in particular case, then what would be the regression? Or if you're able to do the stretch and are not feeling the stretch to an extent, what would be the progression? Uh, there wouldn't be a scenario which comes to my mind wherein you are doing a stretch and you are extremely flexible and you're not feeling any kind of lengthening uh, in the muscle happening or the stretch, you don't feel the stretch happening. Uh, but still, if there is a case wherein you don't feel the stretch, we can progress it a bit. We can over, uh, we can exaggerate the stretch for you to feel it. But otherwise, at any moment you feel uncomfortable or it gives you discomfort or you feel like your muscles are going to cramp, that's a sign for us to regress. So let's start and I, I'm hopeful and I'm very positive that these stretches are going to help you a lot. So for the first stretch, I'm going to massage my underside of my foot because it is the side which is mostly overlooked and if you're someone who is wearing shoes throughout the day or wearing heels or wearing, uh, you know, formal shoes and your feet stays completely locked up in the shoes for a long period of uh, uh, time, it's absolutely necessary for you to perform this so that the underside of your foot doesn't become tight and cause over pronation over a period of time. This, uh, when you do this massage, it releases the tension and helps the arch to go back to its actual position. And it's very important. In future, I would be explaining in detail why it is important or how it helps you. But for now, we are going to proceed with the uh, massaging technique. For this, you need a ball. It could be any ball. I would suggest you start with a tennis ball if you have extreme amount of pronation where your feet are completely flat. If not, uh, 
just go with a uh, soft tennis ball. I choose to go with a uh, golf ball because I do this massage on a regular basis and I need a little bit of hardness. So it's simple, you put the golf ball. You can do this while standing or sitting. The pressure is absolutely under your control. So you just put your feet on the ball, right? And just in the middle of the foot, you roll up and down. You just need to do it for 20 seconds at a time, couple of times. If there is any kind of tightness, you would definitely feel it right away. And if there is tightness, just for example, I feel a little bit tight here, so I'm just going to add a little bit pressure by pushing my foot down. So when you're standing, you can simply add pressure to it. So I'm just going to do it for another five seconds, roll forward and then switch my leg. So it's a very simple massaging technique which everyone can do. You can do this technique every day regardless. You can do it uh, after getting up or just before going to sleep, even doing it both the times, it's quite helpful. It relieves the tension under the underside of your foot and prevents overpronation. Uh, and in this foot, I feel a little bit of tightness just under my toes. I'm going to massage there. If for any reason it's very uncomfortable or if you're not able to put any pressure, you can regress by just using a heat pad. So you can just place your foot on a uh, bearable hot a pad or a hot bag and that would help you progress to massaging. That's a few seconds. I'm going to do the other foot again. So this time I'm going to do circular motions just to reach all the areas. You don't need to put much uh, massaging on your heels. The most important part is the arch which usually collapses. And that's the muscle which makes sure that when you're walking, your feet doesn't overpronate and doesn't put extra pressure on your knee. So it does matter a lot because that small shift of weight can transfer straight to your lower back and cause problems there. So this could be literally the root cause of sometimes the back pain which many experience. the other foot. You can definitely use softer ball. You can start with a very soft tennis ball, then you can slowly graduate, gradually move to maybe a cricket ball. And then if you feel the cricket ball is also not pressure enough, then you can use the golf ball, which is more uh, smaller and more precise. It's very easy to increase pressure in this exercise. So that's it. So I am done with my under the uh, with my foot massage. Now we are going to start stretching our calves. To do the calf stretch, it's very simple. You just need to put one foot, right now I'm putting my left foot back and my right foot, right foot forward and you should instantly start feeling a little bit of stretch right here. Make sure the knee, the hips and you stay straight so the stretch is not compromised anywhere and then slowly shift your weight forward onto the foot forward and right about there I feel a good amount of stretch. For you it might not be necessary that you need to come so much forward. If it is tight already, you would feel a great amount of stretch just in the neutral position itself. So you can hold there for 20 seconds or you can shift the weight forward and then start feeling a stretch on your calves. So I'll hold there for a couple of seconds. See, all the stretches we are doing today are called static stretches. We are not supposed to do these stretches pre-workout. 
these are all post workout stretches and then I shift my foot back this time I am going to stretch so my right calf is really tight the moment I shifted the uh, position I instantly feel a stretch so then now I just exaggerated right where I feel the maximum stretch and then I hold there so this position I feel the maximum amount of stretch on my calf remember all the calf work we have uh, been doing through the uh, videos so this would truly release all the tension the other way which you would see usually people doing a calf stretch is to do it using a step up box which I'll just grab you can do it too just place the box down and then your toes at a height I'll do one foot at a time so that you can see how it is done right toes on the box heels down and then push forward the moment you push forward your calves are really working hard by lengthening themselves to stop your knee from falling or collapsing forward so right now they are extremely stretched and if I tr try to straighten my leg more and correct my posture I feel this stretch exaggerate now while doing this stretch if you kind of feel any kind of uh, sorry if you feel any kind of discomfort the regression would be just massaging your calves for 20 seconds at a time two to three times right now I don't feel any discomfort all I feel is a good stretch so I'm going to hold there you might feel a bit of stretch traveling up your hamstrings that's okay now again I would correct my hips straighten my body and then lean forward a little bit you don't have to lean or exaggerate much if you feel imbalance you can use a bench on your side for balance so right now I'm stretching my left calf I feel a good stretch I am doing all of my uh, stretches barefoot it is not necessary for you to do the same you can wear footwear of your comfort just not uh, flip flops or sandals because they will definitely slip off while doing these kind of stretches comfortable shoes or just go barefoot like me yes for the massage you definitely need to go barefoot you can wear socks that's fine you can also do this stretch uh, with both your legs if you are able to balance yourself well I can balance myself well so I am going to put it and the way I exaggerate is I push uh, just lean a little bit forward to shift the weight now my calves are working really hard I don't want my hamstring to kick in so I just lean enough to feel my calves working since I place them at a stretch already and that's it and that's how you do your calf stretches now we move on to our hamstrings quads and glutes for hamstrings which we are going to stretch first you don't have to necessarily uh, take your foot really high remember your hamstrings are connected to your calves at least they they are not technically connected I am sorry about that they come and intersect at your underside of your knee joint and then your calves go ahead so if your leg is straight this part of your hamstring is already at a stretch this is the neutral position of the hamstring so if I do any kind of toe raises I feel a slight stretch in my hamstring because I am trying to overextend my leg now my hamstrings are also connected to my glutes so if I lower myself a little bit right 
I feel the stretch exaggerate. It's that simple. You don't have to place your feet really high. You just have to put pressure or stretch both the ends where the hamstrings tie. So your hamstring tie, tie into the glutes and underside of the foot. So if you just put a little bit of pressure, very simple. If you feel any kind of imbalance, use a support. If not, that's about it. Hold there for at least 15 to 20 seconds. Feel a good stretch. You can try turning your leg on the sides to see which side is more caught up or more tight. The rule applies. If you feel discomfort, stop doing it. Regress to foam rolling. So you don't have to do any kind of extraordinary positions to stretch your hamstrings. Quite simple. Now I switch my leg. So if you see, my leg is straight. I keep my other foot absolutely grounded in control. And if I want to feel the initial stretch, I can just try to raise my toes and I feel my calf stretching. So I start adding pressure on my, I start pushing my glutes back a little bit by trying to lean a little bit forward. And then I feel my hamstrings start stretching. They behold, I feel a good stretch, can turn my foot a little bit to feel any kind of okay. So it, and when I turned my foot towards my right, I felt a great amount of tightness. So I'm going to hold there for a few seconds. Remember the objective of this exercise is not to try to stretch our muscles, like stretch them extremely. We are just trying to make sure that they regain their original length or the neutral length, which they're supposed to work in. If any of our muscles get a bit tight, they would cause millimeters to centimeters of tightness in the, uh, uh, you know, decrease in the length that would adversely affect other muscles because our entire body is connected to one other. And you, while working, depending upon the kind of work you do, the loads can shift to the muscles in a different manner than they are supposed to be. And the ergonomics of your working, uh, the ergonomics of your work might be disrupted. So the other leg, this leg, it's a bit less tight than the other one. So if you feel the same way that one leg is tighter than the other, it's common. You need to hold the stretches up to 20 seconds. More than 20 seconds, it's not necessary. It's, uh, it's, you're not really doing anything great or achieving more. 20 seconds, maybe sometimes if there is a bit of tightness, you can do the stretch for 20 seconds and add five, five to five seconds more to the uh, point where there is more tightness or repeat the leg another time. Sometimes when you try to stretch and if there is discomfort and you still push through, there can be cases when you, when your muscle gets extremely defensive and kind cause something like a spasm, like it can completely lock up and stiffen up in a defensive manner. So it's very important to not push yourself in stretches when you're uncomfortable. It's always better to regress and move to foam rolling or massaging. So we are done with our hamstrings. Now we are going to do our quads. So I'll show you how to do the quads. We stretch our quads. For quads, it's actually very easy. And you don't have to do anything out of ordinary. Your quads are connected to your hips and your knees. So if we extend those two joints, they start lengthening. So it's very simple. Stand straight. I'm using a support. So you can do 
and you should because that would really help us stretch better take your foot in your arm right and then slowly get your quad uh, your leg in line with the leg which is right now on the floor just in line okay i already feel the stretch it must be really uh, tight so if it gets uncomfortable i go back to foam rolling and then stretch so right now i feel the stretch see i'm not bending forward or doing anything i'm just standing straight took my foot in my arm and let my quad extend so i'm basically pulling the uh, knee end uh, attachment of my quad behind without letting my knee go back so it's creating a stretch there i'm sometimes amused by our human body like how pulling my leg back helps me stretch my quad and if i go on to exaggerate that stretch i try to touch my foot to my glutes and yes i feel great stretch the more i am straight in line with my other leg the more the stretch i feel it's very important for you to stand straight because remember your quads are attached to your hips if you start bending forward you're basically loosening or letting the stretch loosen out you stand straight your hips are already in their neutral position so your quads don't have any play area and the moment you pull your leg back so one end is fixed the other end you're pulling it creates a good stretch hold it for 15 to 20 seconds and then you can shift now for the second side for this uh, for showing you how it is done i'm just going to shift the camera a little bit behind so you can see me more clearly and you turn again take the foot so when you're taking the foot you don't have to try to get in line it's when once the foot is comfortably in your hand and you're well supported this feet is well planted slowly pull the leg in line with the leg which is down yes i feel the stretch okay my leg is really tight so i'm trying to push my foot back to my glute to feel the stretch and if you want to see if there's tightness you can just move your leg from behind just onto on the sides and if you're someone who has already a great mind muscle connection you would really feel all your quadriceps stretching or the stretch shifting from one side to the other side so i'm going to hold there yes that felt good so i'm going to repeat again I'm going to do again two times two to three times of stretching one muscle would be sufficient so again i took my foot in my arm and slowly pulled it in line with my foot other foot which is on the ground and i try to stand straight the more i try to touch my glute the more stretch i feel in my quads if you are very flexible and you can easily touch your glutes with your foot while pulling it back awesome <laughs> because at this moment of time i'm not able to but you would still feel the stretch if if you have gone to a good leg workout your quads should be very tight or if you do uh, a desk job and you sit for long periods of time your hamstrings get tight and when you're trying to do other uh, chores through your day you might slowly get more quad dominant then quads will get tight it's it's basically one affects the other domino effect so stretching is quite important post workout you can also do the stretches every day if you feel like uh, before going to sleep 
after a long day even if you haven't done any exercises you have done you have just done some running or some other kind of sport you can always stretch post that activity before going to sleep to ensure that you're not sleeping with shortened muscles so that's how we do our quads stretching very simple now we move on to our inner thighs glutes so for our glute stretch i want you to be seated comfortably on the floor or a yoga mat what we are going to do is we are going to do one side at a time simply raise your foot for uh simply raise one foot up the one which we are going to stretch is my right glute right now i am going to shift this foot over the other foot while keeping myself straight i already feel the stretch right here so then if i want to exaggerate you must have seen this stretch performed multiple number of times this stretch might also even travel just above your glutes to your lower back but it's okay and then you start pushing the knee out so right now my lower back is stable and i am pushing my thigh outside so basically my glutes are connected to my thigh my outer thigh and they connected to my lower back i have stabilized my lower back by sitting down and now i'm just pulling my leg the other side to create a stretch on my glute as simple as that again if you're uncomfortable if, if there is any kind of pain which is kicking in while you're doing this exercise even at your uh, lower back that means there are really tight sore spots which would need some kind of massaging or heat pad so do that first exactly where the pain is so now i switch side and i pull what would that massaging and heat pad do is that relieve that area of tension so you can you can then progress to stretching the most common areas which feel tight are the hamstrings quads your calves your lower back so stretching these areas regularly is not a bad idea so end of the day if you can spare just 4 to 5 minutes because all we are doing is holding a stretch for 20 seconds so you can do this while speaking to your family members while watching tv or just while uh listening to podcast so do as it is just 5 minutes of your time gives a great amount of relief to you throughout the day while i am doing this stretch along with my glutes i am also feeling bit of stretch on my abductors which is the outer side of my thigh and i relax now in this position i am going to switch and show you how to stretch your adductors which is the inner side of my thigh even these work really hard because they have a lot of stability work to do and they are responsible to getting your foot to the midline of your body so what simply we have to do is one foot out the other foot comes in and the foot which is out is where you feel the stretch so you try to push it out so it's straight okay if right now i am not able to balance myself which could be the case with you also so you can use one arm to balance yourself if you are really good and you don't have any kind of restrictions or don't feel any tight spots like right now i'm feeling it you can take off your arm and put them forward but i am feeling a bit of tightness so i'm going to use my hand to support myself but my focus is in my adductors so hold there 
for 20 seconds. And then switch. So um, when I'm doing this side, I feel a little bit better. That means my left side was a bit more tight. So I would focus more on that. But this side is a little bit better. As you can see, I am able to sit without any kind of support. So these are the experiences which you need to focus on to see where the discomfort is or where what is or which side of your body is a little bit more tighter than the others uh, on the other side. Or if the both sides are good, I'm happy for you. If both sides are tight, we just need to follow the stretches and we would soon see some relief. And that's how we stretch our adductors. Now we move on to our hips, our lower back, and then we slowly move on to our upper back. So we are now going to do a stretch which focuses on our hips. So our hip muscles are located inside in the inner side, uh, they originate right from our pelvic bone and they go and attach themselves just under side of our lower back and they are inside. They are not on the out outer side, they are in the, uh, inside. So, so what stretch I like is to put one foot, uh, knee down on one foot, put one foot forward. So right now, this side of my hip so I have to turn your side. This hip is right now at its neutral position. It's stretched out. This foot is helping me balance. It is stretched out. If I want to exaggerate the stretch, I simply raise my arms and turn. The moment I turn, I feel a great amount of stretch happening right here. So this hip is shortened. So you don't have to turn the other way. This hip is shortened because my uh, legs are raised up. So it's in a shortened position. This hip is right now in its lengthened position. So I stretch, try to reach the ceiling with your hands and hold there for a good few seconds. You might feel multiple areas getting stretched I do also feel a little bit of my lower back getting stretched. That could be the case because as I mentioned before, all our muscles are integrately connected to each other. And when we start stretching one of them, the joint where they are attached to the other, or the immediate attachment gets stretched too. So if I have to turn this side, now this, my left hip is in its stretch or it's in its neutral position. My right hip has shortened after I've lengthened it. I raise my hands to create a stretch. I can even bend down. You must have seen people bending down to create that exaggeration. You can do that or you can try reaching up towards the ceiling. I feel a great stretch right on my side obliques and my inner hips. I hold there at least for 10 seconds. And then I switch. again. Hip stretches feel great because if you are someone who is sitting at a desk for long periods of time, when you do this stretch, initially it might feel a lot of tightness. So again, massaging comes in to your, into the role. But otherwise, whenever I do these stretches, they feel great. I feel some kind of tightness unlocking. Again, I am trying to stretch 
the hip muscle which is on my left side because my left knee is down so I'm exaggerating that stretch by raising my arms by turning a little bit trying to reach something which is up oh that felt good so that's how we stretch our hips now we are going to move to our lower back stretch for this stretch I forgot to switch on the mic so I missed the audio so I'm going to do a small audio over uh, we are going to focus stretching our quadrus, uh, quadratus lumborium which is just uh, on our lower back just on the sides so what we are going to do is uh, as, as you can see I was trying to explain the whole bit in the video so showing you exactly where the muscle is we stand beside a frame so it could be a door frame it could be uh, like the one I'm standing here beside a Smith machine and once you're beside the frame you hold the lower side with your arm which is just beside the frame and then you hold the upper side of the frame with the arm which is outside so both your arms are holding the frame now you slowly step out a little bit to start feeling a stretch on the outer side and then you can take your outer leg and put it back to exaggerate the stretch on the lower back so right now we are creating a stretch on our lumborium muscle uh, there are multiple lumborium muscles which are located there basically these muscles work really hard to stabilize us during uh, exercises such as bent over rows, deadlifts, squats whichever exercise requ uh, requires a lot of lower back stability so these muscles are working really hard and they also pitch in a lot when you are doing your regular uh, movements such as leaning on the sides, bending forward, this contract and lengthen to control your body's motion. As you can see now I'm going to do the other side. In similar fashion, place your hand which is just beside your frame on the downside, the outer arm goes above your head, you slowly step out, then you take the leg which is on the outer side or the one which is outside or not beside the frame and put it behind across your body to create the stretch as you can see you, you definitely need to hold it for 15 to 20 seconds to feel the stretch you also would feel the stretch traveling right through your upper lats even a, a little bit into your uh, hips, hip muscles, maybe slight bit on your on your uh, glute minimus or the medial glute. So it's a great stretch. I really like it. It feels a great amount of tension getting unlocked whenever I do this, and it also at times uh, gives relief to people who have lower back pain, who experience lower back pain. I'm actually explaining the same thing in the video. It's just unfortunate that I forgot to switch on the mic. So the audio was not caught well. So I decided to just add a voiceover. So we are done with this stretch. Now we go on to our lower back. So to stretch our lower back, it's very simple. Again, if you feel any kind of discomfort, you can massage your lower back before moving on to this stretch. If the uh, pain is a lot more, or it's a very dis uh, actually not if there is any pain or if you can have any kind of diagnosed spinal cord issues such as disc bulging or uh, you know anything which is related which has been already diagnosed by your doctor please take the advice of your doctor before doing any kind of stretches which involves your spinal cord but if you're a fit person who is just experiencing tightness after a workout or a little bit of lower back discomfort you are most probably good to go so in this stretch I want you to sit straight 
right, in a neutral position, take your foot forward. Uh, always remember, my back is neutral right now. Take your foot forward as much as you want. And then slowly, very slowly, just start uh, crunching your stomach in. And then you'll feel your lower back getting stretched. And I feel my lower back, the muscles which are just beside my spinal cord stretching. Remember, I don't want to round my lower back. I keep my back neutral and I crunch my stomach in. And as I crunch and my upper back comes forward, my lower back gets extended. The cue here is to feel your lower back stretching. Initially, it uh, you wouldn't be, or you might not be able to recognize it because we, many people often don't do this stretch, but it's quite important, especially on the days when you perform exercises such as bent over rows, deadlifts, which uh, create a lot of stress on the lower back because it's working really hard to stabilize your body through those moments. Even when you're squatting, your glutes and your lower back are working really hard. And then relax. Simple, hold the stretch for 20 to 30 seconds, do it a couple of times, and that is enough to stretch your lower back. So we have basically stretched the entire uh, compartment of our lower back. Now we move on to our upper back. For my upper back stretch, I like to do this stretch. I feel I am able to extend it way more, but I'll show you another variation of the stretch also. So to start with, this is simple. You can take a bar or a support, it could be anything. Place your hand on it. Uh, it'll be ideal if the height of the bar or the support is just at your shoulder uh, at your shoulder height and when you're standing and then slowly step back a little bit lean outside lean outwards the moment you start leaning you start feeling your lats starting to come out and then as you press down and start letting yourself collapse onto the side you slowly start feeling your upper back or your lats on the sides start to stretch. Don't have to hold really tight, just support it. Push your body back and lean onto the side. There, that's it, I feel the stretch. If you're unable to connect to this stretch, don't worry, I'll show you another variation. You might connect to that. If not, this is very good. I feel my lats completely popped out and they're stretching. It's important to keep your hand straight, don't bend your elbow. Because when your elbow bends, your tricep is relaxed and your lats are connected to your triceps. So if your tricep is relaxed, relaxed, it gives some amount of play for your lats. So you might not experience the full range of motion. So if I'm going to do the other side, facing you a little bit to show how I lean. So I put my hand, my shoulder length, I just go a little bit forward and start rolling out, outside and that's it. Start feeling a stretch on my upper back. It's a very simple stretch. You just have to focus on putting your weight on your lats. And relax. Now, the other variation of this stretch is, let me just grab a bench and put the camera in place.
you knee down place your triceps flat on the bench both of them okay and then slowly push yourself behind till your head is just about outside my hands are still on the bench and then i push or slightly let my way uh, my weight of my upper body go down and i start feeling a stretch on my upper back the stretch will travel through your triceps to your lats so here keeping your hands bent would shift the uh, stretch from your triceps mostly towards your lats and if you try to pull yourself behind by not actually pulling yourself behind but trying to put weight on your glutes you create more stretch remember you don't have to go really down or push yourself really hard just have to put weight on the lats that's about it hold there for 15 to 20 seconds and that's it you're done so that's two variations of stretching your lats now we move on to our chest multiple ways to uh stretch your chest but there's one way which i really prefer or like actually there are two but right now for the to, to do uh, to do the second one i need a very light weight rod which is not at my disposal right now in future if i have one or get one i'll definitely show you how to do that stretch but you need to find a corner just like this a right angle corner the position to start with would be your arms at your shoulder length raised up just like this so your elbows are at your shoulder length and your palms facing uh just in front of you so you go to the corner you place one foot forward place your arms on on the one arm on the one side of the corner and the other arm on the other side of the corner and slowly push yourself forward very slowly and that's it immediately i start feeling the stretch i'm not exaggerating my pushing forward i just lean a bit forward and i feel the great stretch happening if you want you can switch your foot a few cables at my foot just adjusting them remember you don't have to really exaggerate or push your shoulders extremely back from a neutral position where your hands meet the wall just let them rest relaxed manner and with one foot forward you slowly lean forward that's it and you would feel a stretch you stop there and you hold it you don't want to rock front and back you don't want to try to go way forward by squeezing your back just enough there hold there for 15 to 20 seconds so the main job of uh, of our chest muscle is to bring our hands towards the midline of our body right now we have kept our hands away from our midline of the body and we are pushing our body towards forward while our arms stay back so we are going in the opposite direction of what our chest usually does to contract and that is how we stretch and this rule applies to all of our muscles the while we consider the main job of our muscles is to contract lift things produce power the functional side of our muscles is to lengthen and control our body so if you see any muscle uh, for example our hamstrings their job is to ensure that when we lean forward we don't tip over because if they are not there to hold us 
will definitely lose balance and fall forward. Not only the hamstring, the calves, the glutes, they all are stretching to slow down the movement. And when we were walking, the foot, when it goes up or when we're running the foot which goes up, the hamstrings contract. So while this is the job to produce power, this is its functional job to make sure that we don't fall forward. In the same way, our chest, while its main job is to bring our hands to a midline of our body or push things by providing us the strength by contracting themselves, our triceps also do some job in pushing because that's how they contract. The functional job of chest is to make sure when our hands are outside of our body to make sure they don't dislocate themselves or they, 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 uh, they just don't crash. I'm sorry, I fumbled there. They just don't crash. So we have to always remember when we stretch, we are training the functional part of our body. Uh, post workout, we always do static stretches so that we regain the length or the neutral length of the muscle so that it can do its functional job. For example, if, uh, if one of your muscle gets tight throughout the day while working or due to your lifestyle or due to the uh, form of work you have, for example, the uh, desk job which I keep mentioning, that's the one which keeps coming to my mind, or, or even if, when you're, if you're standing for long periods of time and your uh, legs, your quads are constantly extended, when you are trying to sit down or lean down or get up, because of the tightness of your quads, it starts pulling your abdominal, uh, the abdomen in. Because when you are trying to bend or sit down, the quads are unable to lengthen because you have been standing all day and they kind of are in the contracted position all day. And when you ask to sit down or bend down at your knees, they are unable to lengthen efficiently. So what happens is they start pulling one end and usually it happens to be the hip end where they're connected and your hip starts pulling your lower back. And that's how sometimes you also get the lower back exaggeration because of tight quads. Same thing can happen with hamstrings. I can give you numerous number of examples when the length of a muscle is compromised even by a little bit but it's nothing to worry about or nothing which is beyond correction. Uh, if you know, if you, have, if, you are, if you have successfully identified tightness and you start massaging it and you start stretching and focusing on it, the muscle will regain, uh, regain its length. Now as a corrective exercise specialist, I find it easy because I have studied and practiced this for quite some time to identify those things at least in myself and even if I'm training someone in person or someone who approaches me to consult me, I find it a bit easier to identify. For you, it might find, you might find it a little bit challenging. So I'll try to help you as much as possible through my workout videos, throughout my workout videos. I'll keep telling you if you feel tightness here, you should work on this. If you feel tightness there, you should work on that. So I hope I'll be able to help you more and more. Uh, on that note, let's move on to our next stretch. I don't want to uh, waste much of your time in one, uh, one stretch and explaining you random things. Uh, so we'll start stretching our uh, neck muscles. So for stretching our neck, uh, neck muscles, what we are going to do is we're going to stand straight, right? We shrug our shoulders and slowly put our arm on the head and pull it side. Absolutely slowly, you don't have to jerk it, but stand straight, pull your head sideways and you start feeling a stretch traveling right at your side of your neck. Remember, if you feel uncomfortable, massage the area first before moving to the stretch. If you don't feel uncomfortable and you just feel, all you feel is a stretch, that's a good sign. Continue with the stretch. Right now, I'm stretching my neck. I don't feel a lot of soreness, so it's easy to stretch. Do the other side. Bit of tightness here on this end. Maybe because of the way I sleep. Sometimes, if you're someone who, if you're a side sleeper, one side could be tighter than the other. 
you don't really have to put much pressure a little bit all you have to do is just be straight de shrug your shoulders and pull your head and that's it you feel a great stretch now when it comes to stretching your shoulders your shoulder is a very complex joint so doing stretches such as you know pushing your elbow in all i don't feel much of a stretch on my shoulder i feel much stretch on my lats if it is stretching my delt it's good but otherwise i usually prefer to just massage them with my own hands this constantly massage them this helps me relieve a lot of tension there it's very rare for me to find myself with tight shoulders i never found myself with tight shoulders usually if you have a rounded uh, shoulder that's because your chest is too tight or if you have a uh, really uh, exaggerated chest position where your chest is too high that means you have tightness in your traps you can massage them and you can stretch it your shoulders usually don't get really tight what your shoulders uh, do get is compressed a lot when you're lifting weight and when you're pushing throughout the day so for that i'm going to show a way to decompress you must have seen this in multiple videos or people suggesting you just simply put your arm down okay let your arm hang you don't want to create big circles but just small circles just in between and while turning your arm in circles you want to feel like you're letting your arm weight completely fall off the shoulder basically decompressing the joint so right now i left my arm completely loose down i'm going to do just small enough circles i don't want to go very wide out just stay inside the distance of my feet and then while you're doing it you slowly will feel some release of tension if your shoulders are really compressed and then 10 rounds on the other side so this shoulder of mine i feel it's a bit more compressed so i'm going to turn it a couple more times see how my circles are just enough i don't want to go far out remember your socket the ball and socket joint in your shoulder is just small so tiny circles will do the job and that's how you decompress your shoulders so in this video i covered various muscles various ways to stretch them i might have missed few or my might have missed few variations my objective was to create one video which can be approached uh, to go uh, to do instant stretches not only post workouts but any time during the day to relieve some tension now as i progress in my uh, workout videos i'll be doing stretches post my workouts also and that would help you even more to understand which stretch applies there uh, applies to on what day on what muscle but even 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 otherwise this video could always be a reference point if you don't have time or if you feel some days you know i don't have time to you know go to complete the entire workout i i am just going to follow for some time and then i'm going to cut short on few sets and i'm going to go back so once you go back you don't want to scroll through the entire video to see where i'm doing what stretch you can always come back to this video i'll put time stamps of where or what stretch i have done so you, just, you can just jump to that point do that small couple of minutes of stretch of that body part and you're good to go and you, after doing few number of times i'm pretty sure you get habituated to it and then you will be doing it on your own in no time and that's it. and that is my objective for making sure that you learn it in such a way that you can do it on your own and thank you for joining me uh 
I'm really happy that you're watching this video and I hope you find good amount of knowledge and good amount of help through this video. If you do, please do like and subscribe to my channel and also share it with people who uh, you feel this video would be a great help to and uh, spread the knowledge so that everyone is aware how to work on themselves and how to strengthen themselves. Uh, remember, our objective is to live stronger and we are going to pursue it really hard. And that's it. Thank you. Have a nice day.